MK677 and enclomiphene, the ultimate fake natty duo. So why are these compounds the fake natty duo? Well, they're quite synergistic, as we'll discuss. It's like they were made for each other, like they were synthesized in a lab atop of Mount Olympus. So they're like two anabolic puzzle pieces that fit perfectly together. And those still attached to their natural identity label have a decent argument for these compounds being labeled as natty at least no worse than the argument for them being not natty. So both of these compounds stimulate endogenous hormonal production, analogous to a theoretical hyperpotent hormone boosting herb. So why would they be considered unnatural? Because they're synthetic? Well, so is creatine monohydrate. It's synthesized in a lab via sarcosine and cyanamide. It's not found in nature like phosphocreatine is. And so then you might say, well, oh, MK677 and enclomiphene far more potent than creatine monohydrate. Well, it totally depends on the dosage. There exists a low enough microdose of MK and NCLO that render them less effective than five grams of creatine daily. So the reality is naturalness is a spectrum. These are gray area supplements. And I believe we should attempt to optimize our holistic well-being rather than attempt to satisfy the criteria of these reductive identity labels, natural or not. So this is the next big step in the fitness world to stop thinking in black and white and orienting toward the extremes and instead find balance and mitigate drug abuse. You know, if the standard procedure was to try some MK and NCLO before hopping on a bunch of gear, I think many individuals would be pleasantly surprised with the results and find contentment in this Natty Plus zone, which would salvage their health dramatically long term. So let's talk about the synergy between these two compounds. So they operate on two distinct anabolic pathways. MK677 stimulates the GH-IGF1 axis, leading to more growth hormone and IGF1. And enclomiphene stimulates the HPTA axis, leading to more testosterone. Now, the one anabolic downside to enclomiphene is that even though by itself it appears that the net anabolic effect is still positive overall, enclomiphene does lower IGF1. IGF-1, of course, is an anabolic growth factor, which bodybuilders who are attempting to build muscle, they, they certainly appreciate it. So in this study, both the 6.25 and 12.5 milligram dosages of enclomiphene decreased IGF-1 by about 50%. Why does it do this? Well, increased estrogen can sometimes decrease the liver's sensitivity to GH or alter GH receptor expression, leading to a reduction of IGF-1 production despite normal or even elevated GH levels. And yes, enclomiphene does raise serum estrogen. So there's this common misconception that because it blocks the estrogen receptors, that estrogen is lowered. No, blocking the estrogen receptors signals that estrogen is low. So estrogen production is actually increased, but some of that estrogen is not bioavailable because it's competing with enclomiphene at the receptor. So usually the estrogenic effects are balanced, especially when it comes to fat burning and water retention, but the estrogen modulation does seem to lower IGF-1 levels. Now, is this inherently negative? No, the authors of that study actually perceive that decrease as a positive in reference to cancer prevention. If cancer is proliferating within your system, growth factors like IGF-1 could exacerbate its progression. Uh, but personally, IGF-1 isn't something that I would intentionally suppress if I don't have to but it's also something that I wouldn't want approaching supraphysiological levels. So personally, when it comes to growth hormone and IGF-1, I like to see them a little above average, but not too extreme. As long as I'm implementing sufficient anti-cancer lifestyle practices like fasting to enhance autophagy and insulin sensitivity enhancing protocols like implementing slim pills and overall just living a healthy lifestyle, then I'm not really concerned about any negative effects of slightly enhanced growth hormone and IGF-1. And I enjoy the healing and neuroregenerative benefits of these amplified growth factors. So this is where MK677 fits together perfectly with enclomiphene. Because at low dosages, it seems to exactly compensate for the decrease in IGF-1 from enclomiphene. In this study, 10 milligrams of MK677 increased IGF-1 by 52%. Higher dosages of MK677 seem to more than compensate for the decrease in IGF-1 from enclomiphene. So in that study, 50 milligrams of MK677 increased IGF-1 by 79%, which would almost certainly result in net positive IGF-1 levels if that MK677 was taken together with enclomiphene. So it appears that moderate dosages of MK677 combined with moderate dosages of enclomiphene almost always result in net positive testosterone, growth hormone, and IGF-1, 
which of course, these are all beneficial for bodybuilding, brain health, healing, and overall well-being, but usually they don't approach extreme enough levels to instantiate any pathologies. As long as the proper precautions are taken, again, like maintaining insulin sensitivity with slim pills, restricting calories to a degree, ideally with a decently large enough fasting window to enhance autophagy, etc. So this is a super appealing combo. I just want to emphasize again that dosage matters. Okay, toxicity is in the dosage, not the compound. For example, personally, I've never heard of anyone having any side effects from taking MK677 10 milligrams daily, five days on, two days off, and three milligrams of enclomiphene. On the other hand, I've heard of a multitude of cases of insulin resistance from 20 milligrams of MK677 and higher without any insulin sensitivity enhancing ancillaries. And at 25 milligrams daily of enclomiphene, mood side effects are super common. And of course, everyone is different, so your ideal dosage may be somewhere in the middle. But anyway, you know, if you guys do want to run safe and effective rodent experiments with these compounds, I really appreciate when you guys use my code PLUS at any of the sites I affiliate with. Swisschems.is is certainly the favorite at the moment. It's where I got these ones. So yeah, you know, let me know if you guys have had any experiences with MK or NCLO, or if you guys have any additional insights to offer. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.